Hi guys, welcome back. Um, we still continue um, the existing discussion about the DC DC converter, like a back converter, and we almost um, are coming to the end of that discussion. We have probably one more lecture to go, and then we will start like a, another topology. Remember, if you remember, uh, it's like a boost. Okay. Um, Let's see what we have, the remaining part, to talk about. DC-DC converter, actually, it has two components. One is VR, it's actually voltage regulation, and the other one is power stage, okay? So, <clears throat> when we mention like a voltage regulation, that means if you have noise and unwanted uh, kind of signals, that you can actually filter it, right? You can um, regulate unwanted um, kind of ripple, unwanted noises that be mixed up in your uh, important signal, fine. But there is another thing which is also important, it's called power stage, okay? So power stage actually, it contain all the passive components, like <clears throat> you have a, input capacitor, you have a diode, like a rectifier, you have an inductor, and you have a set of output capacitor. Okay. <clears throat> what happened, if you, if you are familiar with um, the IC that people used, like from linear tech, like a LT, or like a Texas instrument, like a TI, or Infineon, or like an IR, they have two different kinds of um, ICs, meaning sometimes what happens, the converter itself have VR and PS, like your voltage regulator and the power stage embedded inside. So you don't need many more passive components, okay? And there is another kind where you have the VR inside that converter, but the power stage is being placed outside the voltage regulator. So you have to have a lot of components, you know, you have to place inside or on your PCB board. For example, a diode, like a FED, which is your basically, uh, what do you call like a um, switching uh, components that's doing the switching frequency. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. We, we're going to talk about some parameters today. Like, you need those things to calculate some of the important features inside your design. Okay. Input voltage range. <clears throat> what is that? Your input voltage has a range, like a minimum value and a maximum value. Okay, your input voltage. Now, the interesting thing, if you see, I actually pointed out like a way, like... Um, your input voltage has a um, maximum input current, right? That's kind of interesting. Also, if you have a maximum input voltage, that corresponds to minimum input current. How is it possible? Okay, let's see. <clears throat> the eta actually stands for the efficiency, meaning how much conversion you can make. If you have an input power and you do all kind of regulation, power staging, and then you are putting actually a power as well. So how they place, what's the ratio? That's called the efficiency, okay? Usually that should be about 95% or at least 90% in your operating frequency regime, okay? So usually what we do, the efficiency actually your loss, right? For example, if you have 90% efficiency, meaning 10%, your power loss through the converter. You have to take it into account when you do your calculation, okay? So, is efficiency actually your P out over uh, like your output power divided by your input power? And you can calculate, you know, if you do some algebraical, you know, combination, you can actually calculate your input power from your output power divided by your efficiency. Usually what happened you don't know how much current you need from the input, but from the requirement 
you know your output current most of the time, okay? So you have your voltage output, you have your output current, and if you multiply them, okay, that will give you output voltage, okay? When you have output voltage, then actually you can use this formula to calculate your input power. Perfect. Remember one thing, your input power is constant. It's not gonna change. So if you have maximum input voltage, then you should have minimum input current. This product should be equal to the minimum input voltage times the maximum input current, okay? Because your input power becomes constant, okay? This is a very good thing because from that, since you know the max and minimum uh, range of your input voltage, you can actually have an idea that what should be your current range, the maximum current and a minimum current. Second, you have max output current. Why you need that? Because sometimes, say, you have 5 amps for the sake of arguments, but it can hit 6 amps. So you have to take into account that you might get a little higher values, you know, if you crank up your system really hard. Okay. That will give you some sort of efficiency we call Low load, low load efficiency or high load efficiency. Because low load efficiency, if you don't take it into account, the main problem is your efficiency might go down. So when you design the whole thing, probably at your six amps, you have 95% efficiency. But if you go down to like say one amp, your efficiency might be uh, 80% or like a 70 5%, which is really bad. So you have to design in such a way that your max current and your mean current, like a minimum value, should have pretty constant, consistent efficiency level. Okay. Third is the max duty cycle. Okay. Duty cycle means actually your max, your maximum input voltage will give you maximum switching current. If you remember, like, this is a switching power mode, right? SMPS. So when you do switching, right, you're on and off, on and off, through your fed, through your diode, or any external circuitry, meaning you change your duty cycle, then it ramp up your current, and then you shut it off, meaning there is no duty cycle, there is no current, right? So that's the change will give you like a switching frequency. And that's actually control your efficiency as well, okay? So usually what happen, the maximum duty cycle is your output voltage divided by your uh, uh, maximum input voltage times the efficiency. Now, we have to know this value because that will give, up, give us a, a sign of control, right? That is, we can control the sweet maximum switching current because if it's too much, that will create a lot of participation. So we can actually adjust according to our requirement. Okay. <clears throat> Number four is your inductance. This is a complicated formula. I don't want to give it to you, but just, just to give you an idea, like what it should look like, okay? This is the value is the minimum value for your inductance. So whenever you choose something, that has to be greater than this value. Now, there is another two things, ripple current, switching current. We have to have some sort of uh, condition or constraint to determine what values we should have in our specific design. Now, even though I provided all the formula here, but my recommendation is don't use the formula unless you have to, okay? Follow the data sheets 
data sheets will give you what sort of value you need and also the simulation tool you need to use. For example, for LT, if you're familiar, like LT Spice, LT PowerCAD, and if you want to use like a TI, is like a TI WeBench or TINA simulation. So you might, you it, it depends like what sort of things you're going to use, but those are uh, four tools you can use, and that will tell you what values you need for your inductor with everything like your DCR, with your maximum current, with your saturation current, with your max DC current, everything. Okay. That's fine. Come to the next part. It's like rectifier direct selection. That's another important thing. If, uh, it's a basic thing. Remember, I, I think it's a lecture two or three. Um, I define why we need a uh, forward bias uh, diode with an inductor, right? It creates an inductive kick. Okay. Rectifier diet selection, that's actually keep the whole thing going in the same direction, right? It's prevented any sort of reverse current through the diode. That's totally important. So the formula we have, this is your forward um, <clears throat> bias current, IF equals to your output max current that actually you have in your system, okay? That max output current times one minus your duty cycle, okay? This is particularly for bug, okay? For boost is different, for bug boost, it's different as well, okay? The important thing is, <clears throat> When you calculate it, the IF, that will help you to find your power dissipation through the diode. The main problem is for this sort of diode is your power dissipation. If it's too much that uh, you're not aware of, then it will create a lot of heat in your PCB board and it can actually burn it out. Okay. <laughs> and also lower your efficiency of the con converter. Number six, your output voltage setting. Okay, if you, before going through this equation, why don't you take a look at the this picture? It's a voltage divider, right? You have a R1, R2, that's your V out. And this is your actually in between you have a current going through where? To your feedback. This is your feedback loop, loop compensation, right? Okay. So I define it as a I sub R half, uh, the current coming through like that. And this is your IFP. Now, <clears throat> this is the particular equation. You probably get it in the data sheet as well. Um, R2 equals to your uh, voltage feed, like a feedback voltage divided by the current going through the voltage divider. Okay. This is a very important equation because that will give you what output voltage you want and how, based on that, how you set up your R1 and R2, like your voltage divider resistance value, right? But one of the things that I wanted to show you is like, your I R and half, this current, like this current, going through your total, like a, you know, the ladder, like the resistor ladder, should be equal or greater than 100 times your, out, like uh, your feedback current. That's the important thing, meaning your feedback pin should receive very nominal current, okay. Number seven is C out and C in. The, the interesting thing is, I don't wanna show you like a really, really complicated formula. It's so complicated. Don't even go there, okay? Use your simulation tool and it will tell you, and also the data sheet, it will tell you what sort of value you're gonna use and you need to use how many capacitor as well, okay? One of the thing that I need to mention is like derating. Okay, derating means 
if you have a voltage, for example, say 100 volt in that particular, uh, say, output or input, whatever, if you use 100 volt, it's not going to work. It's going to blow up right away. So usually 80% derating you have to use, particularly in aerospace. I work for the aerospace, and I know that I have to use it every time, you know? So in other words, for example, if you have, uh, <clears throat> say, um, 65 volt as an input, and you wanted to put a capacitor there, it has to be rated at least 100 volt. That means um, usually because of EMI and a lot of fluctuation in you know, in a space, outer space, or stratosphere, stratosphere, whatever, it create a lot of noises and it actually suck in a lot of voltages. So when the voltage goes down, your C goes down as well. So we have to make sure that uh, we can um, capture that derating all the time, okay? Um, thank you so much for uh, joining uh, today's lecture. Please share and subscribe. And we will talk soon uh, about the, the last episode uh, regarding the Bakkenberg.